Well, welcome to our Weld County School District 6 Board of Education meeting. It is Monday, January 22nd. This meeting will come to order. Will you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Roll call, Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt. Present. Mr. Hafley. Present. Mr. Lydia. Present. Mr. Matthews. Present. Ms. Pappas. Present. Dr. Richard. Present. Ms. Solis. Present. Seven members present. Thank you, ma'am. Well, under a Board of Education President announcements, I usually have some heartwarming story about engage, empower, and inspire. And I do tonight, too, but it's really brief, but it's heartfelt. Uh, board members had a chance to celebrate with uh, GAP graduates and participants in our CCP program. And, uh, you know, I wanted to say something in a rhyme scheme of some kind, so I think I said that there was more than a score of, uh, of participants in that graduation, and it was great to celebrate them uh, taking a different path, but coming out and graduating from our, from our school district. So our congratulations go out to each of them and their families. Dr. Pilch, I think it's time for the superintendent's report, if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. Thank you, Mr. DeWitt. Good evening, Mr. DeWitt and members of our Board of Education. I'm going to just start with one very brief announcement that then leads into my other comments this evening. So first of all, I want to congratulate you, our Board of Education, on our yet again increase in graduation rates and decrease in dropout rates. So congratulations to all of you for that. of you in the room, not the board, they know why, but some of you in the room might wonder, well, how, what's the board's role in increasing graduation rates and decreasing dropout rates? I'm, because many of you standing in the room are the ones who are doing the work day to day for those little people and those big people as we make sure that every single student has a plan for college and career after high school. Well, I'm here to tell you that without a board of education that is committed and believes, believes truly believes that every student can and should graduate high school because our Board of Education believes that they have supported us in many ways, not only philosophically but financially in allowing us to move the dollars in the way we need to to impact students to increase graduation rate and to de decrease dropout rate. So to put this in perspective, when we look at our historical dropout rate, we had 111 students who finished this year over the number of students who would have dropped out in the past. That's 111 students who graduated. That's pretty good. Over the past. So that's pretty exciting. That's pretty exciting. So I want to invite those of you that are standing in the hall, come on in, because I know why you're here tonight. Um, you are here tonight because we we have an opportunity to just take this recognition of our Board of Education a little bit further. Um, and so I'm going to, to take a moment to do that, if I may. So this month, just last week, our, our governor signed a proclamation uh, stating that the month of January should be National School Board Recognition Month for all of the work that school boards in the state of Colorado engage in for the support of children in Colorado. Now, I could read his proclamation, oh. but I'd rather read my own okay. proclamation. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. I never get to read all the rare answers. I gotta take a breath. So this is a school board appreciation month proclamation. Whereas the Board of Education is a body of elected officials that represents the constituents of Greeley and Evans that live within the boundaries of Greeley and Evans School District 6. And whereas this volunteer board is responsible for overseeing the 12th largest school district in Colorado with more than 23,000 students and over 2,500 staff members. And whereas the Board of Education works to engage, empower, and inspire 
the students of Greeley Evans School District 6, and whereas the Board of Education is committed to supporting the strategic plan of Greeley Evans School District 6 and the work of staff to fulfill that plan, and whereas Board of Education members spend countless hours attending meetings and work sessions, visiting schools, attending special events, taking part in school activities, and volunteering their time representing the district at community and statewide events. And whereas members of the Board of Education are selfless, dedicated, and thoughtful individuals who have committed to improving the education and lives of the students attending District 6 schools. And whereas <laughs> this work and commitment should be recognized in Greeley and Evans and throughout the state of Colorado. Therefore, in witness of the students, the staff, the administration of the Greeley Evans School District 6, we join Colorado Governor John W. Hickenlooper to proclaim January 2018 as School Board Appreciation Month. And this is given under my hand and the executive seal of the Greeley Evans School District, <laughs> dated this 22nd day of January 2018. Thank you. Thank you, Board of Education. Well, I am the one employee of this seven-member Board of Education, and we have one employee who supports the eight of us, Mrs. Christina Crane, and she's going to help me with this next part of our presentation. But we have decided that tonight would be a great time to honor each one of you with a Celebrate Six award winning certificate. Mm. So each of you will be <laughs> winning the Celebrate Six Award here in District Six. And I see a stack of cards here that I think some of you have brought. And then we just have a little token of our appreciation of all the work that you did. Compliments of Bob Billings, hint, hint, and it's not an athletic pass <laughs> for each of you. So. And following the board meeting tonight, there will be cake. But we're going to let you all go home oh. who came just to support the Board of Education because we didn't get a very big cake. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, you know, I want to thank all of you who came tonight Aww. and gave up yet another evening to recognize our Board of Education because I know, those of you lining the wall, you are out many evenings during the week. So thank you. Thank you for giving back tonight for them. Thank you. All right, board members. All right, come on up, Mr. Roger DeWitt. Okay. Board President DeWitt, congratulations on earning the Celebrate Six Award. <laughs> Mr. John Hafley, Board of Director. <laughs> Mr. Doug Lidiak, Board of Director. Mr. Michael Matthews, Board of Director. <laughs> Mrs. Terry Pappas, Vice President of the Board of Education. Dr. Julia Richard, Board of Director Member. <laughs> and
and Ms. Rhonda Solis, Board of Director Member. Again, thank you for all that you do to serve the students and staff and community of District 6. Congratulations, our Celebrate 6 Award winners. Drive home safe, get to work. Wow. They're so sneaky. Bit sneaky. They're sneaky people. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me, Mr. <laughs> President. <laughs> well, Madam Superintendent, it's our pleasure. I have to confess that as we came in and the group was larger and larger, the only thing that kept us in the room was they were all smiling. <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were in trouble. Uh, shall, shall we continue uh, with the work session report, Ms. Crane? Board of Education President Roger DeWitt began the work session with comments and updates from board members and then proceeded to review the calendar of upcoming events and future agenda items. Superintendent Dr. Deirdre Pilch provided information about the planned mill levy override spending in 2018. Mr. DeWitt continued a discussion on board pro protocols that began at the January 16th work session and that concluded the work session. Thank you very much. At this time, I'm going to uh, open up the little door that's involving the hearing of persons desiring to speak before the Board of Education. And I'm speaking slowly and, and enunciating because enunciating, I think we have another one coming in. So the first person who is interested in speaking is uh, Therese Gilbert, AKA Bella Wells. And, uh, and she, you're here to... <coughs> say a thank you in support of the resolution. I suppose not this resolution. No, this one as well. Oh, okay. Most certainly this okay. one as well. Um, I'm just speaking here on behalf of Walder and Water and I'll keep it brief. Um, with a great deal of gratitude to all of you um, for the resolution, unanimous as it was, to um, consider the placement of wells so close to schools. Um, I know that some of you were there June 30th of 2016. You stayed all day. Um, to voice your concerns, and I know you don't make this resolution lightly, and you took it very seriously, um, and again, we appreciate it. You didn't get on the school board to know the ins and outs of uh, oil permits or how to negotiate the COGCC website, and it's not very transparent, <laughs> but I believe that this voice as a school board that you have is very powerful, even if it doesn't have specific legal standing. It's very powerful. Um, we will keep you apprised of the developments with the case. Um, I think it's ironic that that fire happened the evening that oral arguments were heard in district court. Know that they don't have, Windsor Fire Department does not have uh, the final um, report in, but <coughs> nine to 10 <coughs> fire departments showed up that night and didn't really quite know how to address the fire. And any risk at all to the health and safety of children, as you have all uh, shown, is, is a risk too great. So again, thank you for this, and uh, we will keep in contact with you with everything that's going on with the case. And thank you for all the work you're doing to help our kids stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks for keeping us surprised. Appreciate it. The next speaker will be uh, Becca Bay from Salida del Sol, and she's interested in speaking about that. And Becca is not going to admit that she's a recovering student of mine, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's our secret. I Welcome. I have to write things down. So. Glad, glad to have you ready to go. Um, oh, gosh. I taught for three years at Salida del Sol, and... I left the school because of my own, and I left teaching because of my own personal choices. And um, of all of the schools and nonprofits that I worked for and volunteered for, Salida Lo Sol is the only one that's kept me coming back and back in various forms. 
for many reasons, but mostly because I believe so much in this school. And I believe in what it's trying to do for our students and our kids. And I believe that it's not perfect and that we have a lot of work to do. And I believe that we are facing grave, significant challenges um, in education on a national level. But more than anything, I believe that Salifel Soul and schools that challenge students to problem solve in a multicultural way are our future. And as you can see, I'm very passionate <laughs> about the school and what it's doing. And so I just would like the board to consider approving the charter contract as um, written, written and presented to you so that we can give our students the chance for so that we can equip our students with as many skills and as much empowerment as they can possibly have to be successful in the challenges that they will inevitably face. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. <laughs> well said. Thank you very much, Ms. Baker. <laughs> the next speaker is Jill Chartas Garcia, also speaking on Salida del Sol. Welcome. Good evening and thanks so much for letting me speak tonight. Um, I'm also here to support extending the charter for Salida del Sol um, and I bring you a parent perspective. Um, our youngest daughter started kindergarten there last year, she's a first grader now. And we were very lucky, we're, we're not, we don't live anywhere near Salida, but we had some carpool buddies. Um, at the end of the year, our carpool buddies moved back to Oklahoma. So you can imagine they weren't our carpool buddies anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> and we were faced with um, a, a predicament and did a lot of talking and a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, wondering why uh, she was going there. And I can tell you that she is driven to school twice a week by a family friend and three times a week by my niece, who I pay, <laughs> so that she can keep going to Salida. And I want to tell you just a little bit about our experience there. Uh, we were definitely drawn by the dual language program, and we are so grateful for that. But some other things have come out of, of Ryan going to Salida that are a little bit extra. And for a seven-year-old to already be learning what she's learning and aware of what she's aware has, has really meant a lot to us. Um, she's learning content beautifully and she is learning Spanish. Uh, oh, her accent is gorgeous. <laughs> but I think even more important are the social and emotional skills that she's getting there. My, my little tiny girl knows how to code switch. She knows how to appreciate other cultures and, and recognizes how everybody in her class brings something special. Um, I picked her up this fall and as we were leaving she said goodbye to one of her friends and then she looked up at her friend's mom and said adios. And so I said, now why did you choose to say goodbye to your friend and adios to her mom? And she said, well, because my friend speaks English but I know her mom only speaks Spanish. And that's, that's a nice thing to do. It's nice to know where somebody is and speak to them how they would like to be spoken to. And she was six at the time. <laughs> and that's beautiful. Um, the kids help each other. It's actually sort of hard to find the teacher when you walk into the classroom because they're down with the kids and the kids help each other. It is a beautiful place and my daughter feels safe and happy. She's excited to go to school every morning. She loves learning and every time she goes there, she knows that she's part of a family. And so I share that with you, and I hope you will consider approving that charter extension. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ms. Charles Garcia. Appreciate it. Thank you. <clears throat> the next uh, person is Stacy Bailey. Barley. I'm a terrible reader. Bailey. What would you like to be, Bailey? <laughs> Bailey. Ms. Bailey. Forgive me. And you're also going to speak a little bit about Salida del Sol. 
I am, yes. So okay. my name is Stacy Bailey, and I'm providing a parent perspective about Salida del Sol in support of their charter as well. However, um, I also offer multiple perspectives. Um, I'm in the business of education. I'm a former teacher in this district. I now train teachers at UNC, and I have two kids who go to school in this city. Um, with all of that background in education, I chose Salida del Sol for my daughter uh, for kindergarten last year, and I don't live in their neighborhood. I was actually part of Jill Chartis' carpool for a while, too, <laughs> and felt the pain of our friends who moved to Oklahoma as well. Um, when my daughter went to kindergarten, she was so very excited about kindergarten, and her enthusiasm stayed high all year. Um, she found teachers there who were really dedicated to her learning and who cared immensely about her. She learned about math and science. Her reading skills are really high. Um, and she learned social skills as well. She sang, she made art, she went to gym class and was so excited about all of it every day. And, she wasn't, it, it's not just that Salida was good for my daughter. I think also Salida is really good for our community. Everyone knows that Greeley is growing and growing rapidly. And the willingness of this board to offer real choice in education for different community members to meet their different needs and for different families to be able to make the different choices they feel are good for their students, it's a real testament to all of the hard work you do. So I'd like to encourage the renewal of the charter for <coughs> Salida Dussel. Thank you. Thanks, Ms. Bailey. Appreciate it. The next person is Yvonne Zach, also on the topic of Salida del Sol. Welcome. Thank you. Stacy is my daughter, and Harper is my granddaughter. I live in Johnstown, but I traveled to Greeley to Salida del Sol to volunteer. I love being in a school where my children and grandchildren are very busy and very active. I'm here to ask you to vote for the charter renewal for Salida del Sol because I believe it is a school that has a very special mission. I believe that their mission is to bring together students of different languages and they also are there to build community. While I was there, I, I absolutely loved going to the specials in the afternoon for the kindergartners. <coughs> art was amazing, all of the mediums that they used, the community building that the art teachers did, their display of artwork through the hallways showed the pride that the students had in their work. The computers were used in the library, and the library used all the modern technology. I just, I loved being there with the kids for that. The PE class brought kids together playing and being very creative with their play, but learning about PE at the same time and learning how to encourage others to go ahead and participate and be active. So we have been a family of traveling out of the neighborhood to a school that had something special. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ben. Well, thank you all. The next item is the approval of the agenda, and I'll request for uh, a request a motion to consider this item. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 approves the agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments or questions? Roll call, Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt. Aye. Mr. Haley. Aye. Mr. Lidiak. Aye. Mr. Matthews. Aye. Ms. Pappas. Aye. Dr. Richard. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, ma'am. The next item is the consent agenda. And to consider the consent agenda, a motion is required, please. I move that the Board of Education of Wall County School District 6 approves items as presented on the consent agenda and authorizes the officers <laughs> to sign any and all contracts. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments? Questions? Thank you. A roll call, Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt. Aye. Mr. Haefeli. Aye. Mr. Lidiak. Aye. Mr. Matthews. Aye. Ms. Pappas. Aye. Dr. Richard. Aye. Ms. Solis. Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, ma'am. The next item under board priorities is the first read 
of policy J, 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 extracurricular activity eligibility. And we've had the opportunity to look through this uh, line by line. Dr. Pilch, is there something you want to highlight uh, on this particular topic? Only to say that um, I would say this policy is long overdue for District 6. Um, it, this is a policy that most districts, especially with districts with the amount of open enrollment that we have, would have had in place. And so I'm pleased to bring this policy to you and pleased to put some policy into place around students participating in extracurricular activities when those activities are not available either at their home school or if they might be in a private school setting or, or in a home school setting. be happy to hear from board members if there are questions or comments. Mr. Hayfley, please. Uh, I, I appreciate that we have standards and rigor for our activities and, and our athletics. Well, you know, my concerns are that with the eligibility, it seems, and I don't know the answer to this, but some of our buildings have eligibility requirements for activities and clubs, and other ones don't. And I'm curious as to how those buildings make the decision what ones should adhere to eligibility and other ones don't. Is that something you want to ask? No, I'm just Pilch asking. I, I'm asking how, or how do they determine time on that? Or? Is it just building so that, by building decision? No, let me start at the beginning and then I think that we we'll probably need to get you some more information if there's more information that you okay. want, Mr. Hayfley. So there, there are the CHASA guidelines, right. the Colorado State High School Act activities and athletic association guidelines that are set out that we must that is the minimum we must follow and then uh, our home high schools may go beyond the chassa guidelines um, and have additional requirements uh, in addition to those guidelines um, it's it's my understanding that our high schools have worked together the athletic directors to determine those requirements um, this, similar at middle school in that um, our schools work together to determine those and, and if you're curious about individual schools and how they've they've reached um, their their requirements for participation or not I I will need to do some additional research I'm I apologize I'm not down in the weeds that far <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious and we can that's fine I'm, I'm but we can't we can certainly I'm put totally some information together we can, work on it. we can totally I mean this the so I want to be clear just for the public part of this presentation, the, the big spirit of this policy is not around eligibility in terms of um, behavior and academic requirements. The big spirit of this policy is really around eligibility to participate if you're home school of attendance or if you're private school or you're homeschooled and you don't have that activity available to you. So for example, with the opening of Early College Academy, we don't have a football team at Early College Academy. So uh, we followed the CHASA guidelines, these these past few years at Early College Academy, but really felt like in addition to, to following the CHASA guidelines on participation, that we needed to uh, have our own policies in place as well. Uh, <clears throat> Dr. Richard, please. Sorry, asked, asked and answered. Oh, Dandy, <laughs> oh, so, Ms. Yeah, that um, similar questions, but I'm also curious about the participation. Um, do we do we have a sense of how many students participate in participating in activities that would be impacted by this? I'm just this, just out of curiosity. Uh, Terry, I don't uh, miss Pappas. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I'd have to pull that to be accurate. What I do know is we have several students from Early College Academy, for example who are participating in, in athletic activities and other activities back at their home high school. So their home high school of attendance, for example. So I, I know there's several from early college, but we'd ha I'd have to actually um, do some more research to know, say, you know, how many students do we have coming in and doing marching band who are homeschool children. I don't, I don't have that information tonight. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions? Okay, well, this is our first read and you've got some marching orders, I guess, to gather some yeah, more we'll information. Yeah, we'll put some information together and put it in oh. the e-week for you. Thank you very much for that. Absolutely. Dr. Hannaford and Mr. Billings will do that for us. Nice. Thank you very much. Um, the next item is the second read and adoption of policy EHB, records retention, and a motion is required to act on this second read. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 approve the adoption of policy EHB. Records retention is presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. It's been discussed once before. We've had the opportunity to uh, read through this material. Is there still a comment or question from a board member regarding this particular uh, 
um, policy change. I'm not seeing anyone expressing any interest in this. How about uh, a roll call, Ms. Crane? Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hafley? Aye. Mr. Lidiak? Aye. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Mrs. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you, ma'am. Well, now that everybody is sitting in the room waiting for something, let's turn the page to something that some of you are waiting for. Um, the resolution is associated with the Salida del Sol uh, Academy renewal application and charter contract. Dr. Pilch. Thank you, President DeWitt. So what you have before you is actually the resolution to the, and my recommendation to renew the Salida del Sol uh, application as well as their charter contract for a period of five years. As you all are aware, we entered into a charter agreement with Salida del Sol in 2013, and um, it is time to renew their contract. And it, so at, at this point tonight, I would recommend a renewal through June 30th of 2023. And I, I do have legal counsel here available tonight, should you have questions of, um, of our attorney. Uh, I will just remind you all that we had a, an at-length conversation, detailed conversation in our work session um, previously as we discussed Salida del Sol and, and that the staff and board at Salida have been, you know, very, very um, supportive and, and earnest in getting us the information that we've requested to help clarify any of the questions that you all had. And, and they've, they have worked hard to put this renewal application together and as you know, staff has reviewed the application and, and although there, there remain to be concerns with performance, which I'm sure some of you want to talk about, um, and uh, with, with fidelity of implementation of the program they initially promised to implement, um, I do recommend a renewal of the contract with some built-in um, built oversight that it would be a higher level of oversight than what we would typically have with a charter school considering our concerns with student achievement and growth. Thank you, ma'am. It is an action item, so I'd be glad to accept a motion at this time before we break into some discussion among the board members. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 adopts the resolution approving the renewal of Celia del Sol Academy <coughs> as recommended by staff. Second. It's been moved and seconded. I'd be glad to hear from any board member who has a comment to make. Ms. Pappas. Um, I just would like to make the comment that I, Celia del Sol is a school that is needed in our community. I am a strong supporter of bilingual ed. Um, and dual language. I am a strong supporter of the opportunity of, for students to build those relationships with other students, learn other languages, learn other cultures, and I also know how hard it is to, to create an environment, a strong environment that has the components that are necessary for student achievement. It takes time. It takes time for students to learn two languages. Um, additionally, learning how to read and write in your native language. So there are a lot of components to this. Um, but, I, but I believe that with the new leadership, I believe that the um, increased oversight, I think this is the right thing to do. And I will be strongly supporting this um, resolution that we approve the charter for Salida del Sol. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> Ms. Solis. I just want to thank the staff and leadership for working as hard as you have in order to get to this point. Um, it, along with what Ms. Pappas had said, it, it's a hard, hard struggle. Education is difficult, and we see it in our schools every day. And it's a constant reevaluating of tools, different curriculum. How are we doing this? Are we doing it the correct way? And so I appreciate your detailed explanation to us on how you're going to go about that process and continue that process and really train staff to make sure that the Gomez and Gomez is being uh, across the board the way it was supposed to be done. I agree with uh, Ms. Pappas that it's something that was requested from our community. It's been ongoing conversation in our community and we are totally rooting for you. Uh, the relationships between the school board and our charters is in a total different realm now so I'm hoping that we work very closely together to make sure that Salida is 
is successful and that we learn from one another. I mean, this is something that even we as a district can learn and possibly do within our schools at a later point uh, because we know that language and culture is very important to our, to our kiddos and our families here and we have to be very sensitive to those issues and sometimes we're not. And so the fact that you have all made this journey and are, are working this hard, I, I commend you for that and I will be supporting the renewal. Dr. Richard, please. So I too would like to thank <clears throat> the opportunities that have been uh, put together to work with uh, leadership from Salida del Sol and with this Board of Education to take a look at the renewal. It, it's a positive thing for any school and it's something that we do with all of our schools, but especially our schools that are on uh, turnaround, priority improvement and improvement. And so that's, that's been really helpful. Um, within this uh, contract, I appreciate um, that included in that with the board of directors for Salida del Sol that there's also that board training <coughs> aspect. That's really important because as this board turns over to that school, it's millions of dollars of taxpayer dollars that are invested in the children that attend Salida del Sol. And that's a tremendous responsibility. So thank you for the training for the board and for your diligent oversight of taxpayer dollars. Um, I know that uh, at the meeting on the 16th, there was a discussion that there would be some recruiting that would be going on. And, and I look at that time, uh, as you'll be recruiting more students for Salida del Sol, as a really great opportunity to really balance the number of native English speakers with the number of native Spanish speakers to meet that um, expectation of a dual language program that you've got peers on both sides that can model strong language to others. And I think it's also a great opportunity as you're looking to your enrollment to maybe balance out the zip code of the different uh, students that are in your, in your school and to find some diversity there. But I guess what I was touched most by was the sense of urgency of the leadership to understand the importance of student achievement and growth. And so while it's wonderful that, we, that you've created a place where families feel warm and accepted, it's such a huge responsibility to make sure that those children are also educated. And that's a big promise. That's a big promise to say that a child will leave a school literate in English as well as Spanish. So I appreciate in this contract that there is a extra attention given to <clears throat> achievement and growth, especially breaking it out at the, <clears throat> excuse me, at the elementary versus the middle school levels. So we get a more fine grained look at improvements and growth and change in, um, in the school that way. So thank you and I wish you well. Um, it's an important thing that you do to offer that bilingual opportunity to families in our district. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Lidiak, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. DeWitt. I, um, I did have some reservations about supporting and approving a contract renewal for the, for the five years. Um, I was comfortable with the three years, um, but in light of the section 6.3D, um, I do feel that there's significant oversight and inability to, to intervene. And I was wondering if Dr. Pilch could elaborate on that. I can. I, w I actually think I would ask, invite legal counsel up to talk about this, uh, Kristen Edgar. I think she can explain to you really within statute what this means in, in terms of um, our oversight at the school. I, as she's making her way to the podium, I'll just add that, um, as you all know, that when we've had... Um, in, in my tenure here, which is fairly short still, um, that as we've had schools that moved into priority improvement or turnaround, we've had significant oversight at those schools, we being uh, some of my cabinet and then staff who report to my cabinet. We've also been able to engage with the Colorado Department of Education extensively in, in the work at those schools and, and be a part of some of the grant dollars and, and leadership work as well as, as you know, uh, the student achievement work that is offered as a part of those grants through the Colorado Department of Education. So from my perspective, I would want some of that same ability to support, uh, assist, advise, 
um, intervene um, as, as I have with other district schools that are not charters when they move into priority improvement or turnaround, one of whom you will hear from tonight as we look at uh, Billy Martinez's uh, pathway plan that must go to the Colorado Department of Education here next month. Kristen Edgar, please. Sure, thank you, Dr. Pelch and uh, Director Lidiak, as well as the rest of the board. So the Salida del Sol contract that's presented to you tonight is a little bit of a variation from what you've done as a district historically. Um, and it does actually represent a bit of a deviation from what is in the Charter School Act. The Charter School Act typically um, contemplates that you will have an authorizing district and that you will have a charter. And that the charter, though it's a school within the district and a school of the district, it will have a certain amount of autonomy. Um, and it will operate as its own entity with its own governing board. It will operate within the statute, so it has to comply with state law. And it does, to the extent it doesn't seek a waiver, have to comply with district policy. But generally, in terms of things like accreditation, it's going to be sort of rough on its own. And though it's going, you as a board and basically through your staff, would engage in some annual monitoring of each charter, and though you would have an opportunity when a charter comes back to you to look at a renewal um, of that charter and to make a determination whether you are going to not renew or whether at some point because of performance reasons you will actually revoke a charter. Other than that, there aren't that many opportunities for board or district staff to really collaborate and partner with the charter on performance issues. Here, recognizing that there has been performance issues in the past for Salida del Sol, but acknowledging that they've made good progress um, towards, towards improving that. Um, we worked with, with Dr. Pilch and her staff, as well as with the leadership of the school, to see if there were ways where we could build in some intervening monitoring and oversight, as well as some opportunity for the district to extend support um, and intervene, and for the district, for the school leadership to then accept that. That's where we got section 6.3D. Um, as well as the progress monitoring component of that. So that though I would argue that you have always had the ability to perhaps go to your charter schools and to ask for certain kind of data, um, there hasn't been much ability by your school and by the district and staff to go out to a charter proactively and say, hey, let's look at where things are going from a performance standpoint and are there ways that we can partner, support you, and help you improve because recognizing you're a school in our district. So that's why we put that section in there. That was in negotiations, not only with district staff um, and what they felt like they could do, but also in uh, negotiations with the school leadership through their attorney. So this was a pretty collaborative effort. Um, it's based in some ways on what we're seeing in other districts, which is a more proactive part um, by district boards, by district staff, to say how can we work together to have quality schools, be they charter schools or district schools. So that's why that provision is there. It does give you some additional right to information, oversight, and to provide support when there are performance issues both within each level, but also with the school as a whole. Now, if you have any questions specifically about the provision, I'm happy to talk about them beyond that. Yeah, that was very helpful. That was, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ms. Edgar. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dr. Pilt. Appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> I don't see anybody else uh, uh, expressing an interest to speak, but I, I have a couple of, of things, if, if you don't mind. Um, I was just a baby board member when we first started considering this school as a charter. And I figured that this was a good opportunity for me to figure out what a Gomez, Gomez type school would be like. So I drove down to Las Cruces, New Mexico, and got a couple of days worth of education down there on a program that exists there. Uh, and I, I was uh, fascinated and interested and intrigued. Uh, at the time, we had a, a, a rousing debate on the, on the school board as to whether this is the right direction to go. And, and there were a number of comments that this may not be the thing to do. And, and, and we continued to get information that said, you know, this is big work. It's going to maybe take a little bit extra time, but, but you know, give it that time and, and we'll see good things. The, in the intervening years, there were a couple of moments of concern about leadership that, uh, that made me get concerned that we, we weren't just looking at a delay uh, from the standpoint of it takes time to get both languages in place, but maybe some leadership issues. I no longer have those concerns, and I congratulate Salida on getting uh, the right people in the right places to do the right hard work 
and the fact that you have so much support in your family connections that uh, that there is still a, a community of faith that absolutely de uh, demonstrated that they they would like to see this uh, program continue. That said, I'm also delighted that uh, smart people on both sides said, if we do stumble, let's let's work together between the district and our school so that we so that we get our kids, all our kids, to performance where they need to be, and uh, and not <laughs> pretend that we don't care about one another. And so, uh, I'm delighted to see that the uh, the decisions were made and that. Um, and, and the kids are really the focus of our work together, and so we, we can be supportive of that charter school as it continues to grow. That's my story. Um, anyone else have to top that? Can we do a roll call, please, Ms. Crane? Mr. DeWitt. Aye. Mr. Hayfley. Aye. Mr. Lidiak. Aye. Aye. Mr. Matthews. Aye. Ms. Pappas. Aye. Dr. Richard. Aye. Mrs. Solis. Aye. Motion carries 7-0. Congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Now, many of you probably want to stick around for the cake, but if you have other <laughs> things to do, Sally, that we wouldn't object if you wanted to go home and do that thing. Welcome to stick around and see what happens next. But thank you all very much for being here. Just one point of clarification, Mr. DeWitt. So you and um, we, we are authorized then to sign the contract at this yes, point. So we'll, we'll proceed with signing the contract as well. Right. So thank you to all okay. of you. Congratulations. Good night. I guess there are not that many cake enthusiasts, but that's OK. That's more for me. Um, the next item is the resolution for Westridge Academy renewal application and charter contract. It also is an action item. I'd be glad to hear a motion at this time. I move the Board of Education of Wall County School District 6 adopts the resolution approving the renewal of Westridge Academy as recommended by the staff. Second. <clears throat> Moved and seconded. Dr. Pilch, um, before we start asking questions, is there a comment you'd like to make or see someone make? Yes, thank you, Mr. DeWitt. So uh, as is indicated in the resolution, the a previous Board of Education in 2010 approved Westridge Academy as a charter school here in District 6. They came before a Board of Education for renewal subsequent to that, and um, at that time were renewed for only three years because there had been some performance struggles as well as leadership struggles at the time. Uh, we are pleased tonight to recommend a renewal of the application and a renewal of their contract for a period of five years from 2018 through 2023. Uh, we, are, we are very confident with the leadership at Westridge Academy. They've recently moved into a new facility. Uh, we, some of us had a chance to visit the school recently. Uh, we're pleased with what we see in the leadership and the board involvement at the school. And uh, after staff evaluation of the renewal application, we are very confident in recommending the five-year renewal for Westridge Academy, and, and it's been a pleasure working with them. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Hafley. <clears throat> First of all, I need to compliment Dr. Spicer, and as he came in in a tough situation, and he did an outstanding job of, of rallying the troops and creating focus academically as well as a, as a building, and I greatly appreciate that to you and your staff. You know, one of my concerns, though, is that Westridge does not match the demographics of District 6. And, you know, my hope is that a couple of things, that in all of your printed materials, they need to be in Spanish as well as English. And we also need to make sure that, that we reach out to all over our community to try to, to match the demographics. We talked about it earlier, making sure that we had that at Salida del Sol, and we would expect that and hope that from you as well. I greatly appreciate what you do, but I think that that should be some of the goals that you and your board of directors work on. And it's fair to say that that's one board member's opinion. Correct. Thank you very much. Dr. Richards. 
Well, uh, thank you for uh, bringing the application forward. Um, yeah, I've been in on this since the very beginning, and it's, it's great when you see a school get <coughs> reorganized, and then we see the student achievement and growth that we hope for every student in our district, so appreciate that. And now with your expansion, getting a little bit bigger, but still staying that, that small two-round school. Um, you know, in part of the contract in, in 6.3a, it talks about um, the district intervening should your achievement become uh, below the average of the district. And I would encourage you and your board to take a higher stand than that. So while we have that in contractual language, but to look perhaps at peer schools that have similar demographics, because you are unique to our district in the number of students that you have that are English language learners and the number of students that you have that are in, in poverty. And so I would encourage you to really look for some peer schools uh, perhaps throughout the state to set as your goal for where you how you want to measure your success with your students. Um, the second piece is in several places in your charter or in the uh, contract and in the uh, supporting appendices. You mentioned mirroring the demographics of the community, and and I can I, I agree. You know I know that in our conversation. Um, Mr. Spicer had said, you know, anyone who comes up to me and says, you know, we don't have that money, um, I'll work with them, even if it's a dollar. And so while there might not be real roadblocks for a family to actually be there because you would work with them, I'm thinking more about the perceived roadblocks. Because I, as I look uh, today, as I was going through the handbook, and, and I thought, so if I was a parent, you know, looking at the school, and I see that there's a $75 fee that has to be paid before you're officially enrolled. We have families in this district where that 75 or 150, if they've got two kids, that's tough. And it's tough as a parent to say, you know, I haven't got the 150, could you work with me? And that's the first conversation with, that I'm having with my son's principal. And so while it may not be a real roadblock, it can become a perceived roadblock. And so things like the volunteer hours, which I really applaud you, you know, encouraging parents to be a part of, or paying $200 if you can't put in the 20 hours, those can come off as perceived roadblocks even though you're willing to work with people. So as we move into this next five years, I'm looking forward to that that growth and continued maturing of the school to make it accessible in reality and accessible in the perception of families because I believe you have something that other families will like. So thank you. Ms. Elise. I just want to thank them for the hard work that you've been doing to get to this point. Um, again, it's a smaller school uh, and it offers something in our community that isn't offered in other schools, and that's, that's a great choice for our community. One of the things that I loved about the way things have changed around the conversation of education in our community is that it's our kids. And we no longer are your kids or our, or our kids, but they're ours. They belong to all of us, and we all have a responsibility to making sure that they're successful. I would reiterate what Mr. Haefeli and Dr. Richards said about making sure that we have that vision of, of looking and view and the view of, of what our community makeup is and I think sometimes when you're just from a certain area you don't quite recognize what those barriers could be or how that's perceived or like I don't belong in that school I shouldn't go to that school that wouldn't be a school for me um, we want all of our kids to be successful and it's all of our, our jobs so I would love to see a little bit more diversity in your school and changes that would be more inviting to people maybe a monolingual Spanish you know parent that had never heard of your school before being able to pick up some literature and really say wow that that might be a, a place for my kiddo to go and so just making sure that, that you're open to all kiddos in our community, even though you're situated in a certain part of our, our, our city. So just following up on, on what Dr. Hafley and Dr. Richard, uh, just making sure that we're working together to educate all of our kids. Thank you, ma'am. Other comments from board members? 
<clears throat> one of the things I was trying to do some higher level math and I decided that we were making a decision that uh, another board would have to live with. Uh, somebody beyond my, my time on the board. And I have absolutely no hesitation to, uh, to point this uh, school out as an exceptional effort to get good work going for kids, uh, really a lot of innovations, an opportunity in their new setting to grow in a lot, a lot of new ways and deliver educational opportunities to, to a wider community. And uh, I have absolutely no doubt that the leadership will listen to the comments from board members uh, that aren't obviously contractual, but that are uh, words of suggestion and encouragement from board members um, because that's another way to help this school grow and to be successful. So I'll certainly be supportive uh, of this effort and uh, to see the contract is, uh, is renewed. Other comments? Seeing none, uh, Ms. Crane, do you mind giving a roll call, please? Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hapley? Aye. Mr. Lydia? Aye. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Ms. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Congratulations. Looks like you're going to stick around for cake, or <laughs> <laughs> feel free to go celebrate. And congratulations, and thank you very much. We have some more work to do. It's the Martinez uh, Pathway Plan. This is an accountability plan for an innovation school at uh, Villa Martinez. It does require a uh, motion. See, we finally got to you guys. You didn't think it was going to happen. Um, and I'd be glad to, to, to accept the motion at this time. I move that the Board of Education of Wall County School District 6 approves the accountability pathway of innovation for Martinez Elementary School as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Dr. Pilch, I turn to you. Thank you, President DeWitt. Uh, so as, as you all know, after having had an extensive work session with, uh, with the well, with Wes Tuttle and with Monica Draper about the innovation <coughs> pathway plan um, that they've been working hard over the last several months to finalize this plan in preparation for their accountability clock hearing next month at the Colorado Department of Education. So uh, I just want to remind you that we came to you last spring asking for you to approve Billy Martinez Elementary School as a school of innovation. And then we went to the Colorado Department of Education and we, we sought their approval as well. And in both cases, we were approved for Billy Martinez to be a school of innovation. Now, we must go before the State Board of Education because we are the final year on the clock. So we must go before the State Board of Education with a board approved pathway plan to address the accountability clock requirements. And so we're seeking your approval tonight um, of that pathway plan. And then we will, we will go to the State Board of Education on February 15th to seek State Board approval of that pathway plan. We will be the first school to go before the State Board of Education this year with a pathway plan. Uh, or with any plan on the accountability clock. So I want to just walk you a little bit down um, history lane here, and then I'm going to turn it over to Monica and Wes in just a moment. So, uh, you know, we are, uh, quite frankly, we're very disappointed and very surprised to be at this point where Billy Martinez Elementary School is still not off the clock. We were so close to coming off the clock this past year. We were seven-tenths of a point from coming off the clock. And we appealed, uh, but none of our appeals to the state uh, were granted uh, in relation to the school performance frameworks. Nonetheless, we find ourselves still on the clock. Seven-tenths of a point is seven-tenths of a point. And so as you all know that uh, it, my first year, it took me s several months to really get my, my feet under me around what this meant to have schools that are on the accountability clock and schools that are in turnaround status or priority improvement status. Uh, once, once we were able to do that, we, we made some significant changes in how we structure our support for our schools who need the most support one of which is Billy Martinez Elementary School. And so uh, we, as, as a system, have begun to work very differently with our priority improvement schools than what we have in the past. And, and that work, you are seeing the evidence of over the past 
uh, two and a half years. It is that very work that moved Franklin Middle School off the clock this past year, without a doubt. It is that very work that has more schools in District 6 at performance than we've ever had, and it is why we have no schools in turnaround any longer in District 6. So uh, we, we are excited to bring the pathway proposal to you tonight uh, that we will take to the Colorado Department of Education. So this, this, assuming you approve the plan tonight, this is kind of a dress rehearsal for, for both Ms. Straper and Mr. Tuttle as they bring the plan to you tonight. Um, I am very confident in this plan. And I am very confident that Billy Martinez Elementary School is going to come off the clock this year. I'm very confident of that. They will share some of the data with you tonight that indicates that. You will see that um, much of our, our data that we manage throughout the school year is moving in the right direction. You will see how over time the data has moved in the right direction at Billy Martinez. It just hasn't moved quite enough yet. Now what most school districts have done is they've closed these schools. They've closed their turnaround and priority improvement schools or they've restructured. That's why there's no other school going before the state board with us on February 15th. And there's one other going before the state board later, uh, later this spring because most districts close those schools. Well, I have shared with you before, and I want to say it again publicly, that I felt as a system we owed it to the Billy Martinez staff including the leadership to provide, to bring to bear all of the resources we have in District 6 and to provide significant support as well as significant oversight as they began to implement their own plan. And that's what they have done. And you'll, you'll hear more about that tonight and you heard about it in the work session. Um, but there is no question they are moving in the direction they need to move. We did bring in um, the, the consulting oversight gurus from the Colorado Department of Ed last spring to do um, a school review. And we are very pleased to report that in that school review, they reported that Martinez was on the right path. They reported that leadership has this, that leadership is doing the work that must be done, and that the teachers are doing the work that needs to be done. And they were supportive of Billy Martinez Elementary School continuing to pursue the innovation pathway. This is a real win for us. And that, that set of external eyes on this school, on our school, uh, really meant a lot to us because it said, hey, we are on the right track here. And um, I'm, I've, I have been so pleased to see the work at, at Billy Martinez Elementary School. As you all know, it is the school we often take visitors to our district to visit because we're so proud of the work that is going on there. And it is some of the hardest and most complex work that we must do, not only in District 6, but in the state of Colorado. And I'm proud to say that the staff are doing that work. So with that, I will turn it over to Mrs. Draper and Mr. Tuttle to share uh, really their quickest version that they can of the pathway plan. When they go before the state board, they will actually have about double uh, the number of slides you'll see tonight and about double the time to present in front of the state board. However, my little speech, did you time me, West? How much do I have to cut off of it before I get in front of the state board? Time you. Oh, doggone it. <laughs> Uh, uh, that was very good. Uh, we'll go back and replay it and see how long that took me. So, all right, Mr. Tuttle, Ms. Draper, it's yours now. Thank you. See, they had all this time to get ready. <laughs> but we're all spellbound, Dr. Pilch. Christina, it's, it's frozen on. Hmm. We'll get Christina oh, over here to help. Yeah. No, it's coming to you. Go ahead and start and we'll catch up to you. Well, and I, I will just say, I know it doesn't help if anyone is viewing our, our meeting publicly, but um, our, our team of eight has certainly seen um, all of this information that, are, that is on these slides tonight. It's not new information for staff or for us. So. And we can go ahead and start with the demographics. There we go. Good evening, everyone. As you know, Martinez has a, uh, the percentage of free and reduced lunch students, the percent of minority students that we serve are second language learners, and um, the percent of students that are identified with special needs. We have um, had these 
graphics over the past ten years they don't tend to change and it is part of what makes martinez a unique school in district six we are fortunate to have a very dedicated committed group of people who work at martinez as you can see most of them are here tonight we have a high tend to stay at Martinez. Most movement has been the result of non-renewals or retirements. Martinez staff are extraordinarily committed to improving the results for all children. Our co-created mission and vision are the driving force behind our innovation plan. We are dedicated to the creation of a better future for all children by providing a solid foundation of learning through STEAM and project-based learning. In the last three years, as um, Dr. Pilch alluded, our data is moving upward in a positive fashion. When we look at the school performance framework in 2014, we were 7.3 percentage points away from the improvement status noted by the red line on this graph. The cut score then for improvement status changed in 2016 when we were 5.4 percentage points away from the improvement status. And then, as Dr. Pilch alluded to, only 0.7 away from improvement status in 2017, noting a positive trend toward getting this school off of priority improvement. When we think about English language arts and CMAS, we notice the mean scale score going from 20.8 below the state expectations in 2015 to only 10.4 scale points below in 2017. Another very positive trend. Improvement efforts must begin with good data. Observational data allows us to identify what works and to replicate those efforts. We support classrooms by being in rooms and providing clear, consistent feedback to teachers. We've been able to replicate promising practices due to this effort. Allison and I continue to grow our own skill set in this area by participating in relay training from the state to provide deeper and better feedback to all teachers. Our innovation plan had its beginnings in the diagnostic review requested in the fall of 2015. The recommendations provided a clear direction for our work, including a focus on learning targets and success criteria. We use a planning process called Understanding by Design. We focus on results by collaborating every week on data and the needs of our students. Our building leadership team meets every other week to address building data and to plan for building-wide interventions and supports for all students. We use the consensus decision-making process. Re the results of all of this work is our school improvement plan with two focused goals, best first instruction and culture climate. Then in 2016, Martinez was awarded the Pathways Grant from CDE. This allowed us to explore the different accountability pathways, and in October of 2016, the staff voted with 100% to pursue the innovation pathway. As we began working on our innovation pathway, we had 100% of the certified staff involved, as well as several classified staff members working on the work teams. We shared monthly and got feedback from the PTO, as well as the SAC, to get the parents involved with the whole process. We also had several district level members involved in the process supporting different aspects of the plan's development. The final innovation plan, as Dr. Pilch alluded to, was brought to you May 8, 2017, and approved here, and then went to the State Board of Education on June 14th for approval there. This plan includes being a STEAM school through project-based as the vehicle. It also includes extensive professional development for teachers on project-based learning, as well as literacy design collaborative, often referred to as LDC. After we solidify the first instruction in the culture of the building, we had planned to look at providing preschool at Martinez to allow early access to many of our learners there. This was actually accelerated through CPP funds, and we have that kicking off this last fall of 2017. This is in addition to the Head Start program that was already on site. We also plan to explore the feasibility of developing a healthcare center on site in the future. is the key to our success. Professional development at Martinez focuses on our first goal for school improvement, best first instruction, specifically project-based learning. 
Last summer, nine lead teachers, the instructional coach and I, were trained in project-based learning in, um, from June 18th to June 22nd by the Buck Institute. We will attend the second year training this summer in June of 2018. In August of 2017, teachers returned four days prior to the rest of the teachers in the district to receive the initial training in project-based learning. The nine project-based teacher leaders work together to provide this training to all staff. All teachers at Martinez work in smaller groups which meet weekly with the focus of providing ongoing support and learning throughout the year. These weekly check-ins are vital to helping everyone feel successful and supported throughout the year. All of this work has been funded through Title I and the network grant through CDE. In 2017, Martinez joined the Turnaround Network through the Colorado Department of Education. This group provides unique opportunities for professional development for building administrative teams. We meet with other administrators from around the state for professional development in observational feedback, using data to support instruction, and we are able to visit other schools within our state. We work with Nicole Monet on site each month. Through the network grant, um, we have the opportunity to conduct a behavioral event interview with Monica Draper, the principal at Martinez. She did this voluntarily because she's invested as a growth mindset and a learning as a leader. It affirmed several strengths in Monica as a leader, including commitment to student learning, engaging the team, and focusing on sustainable results. It also identified some areas to develop, such as impact and influence, and holding people accountable for school performance. We are committed to continuing to develop the school turnaround leadership competencies in Ms. Draper. In the spring of 2016, I'm sorry, the direction of innovation status here, um, in the spring of 2016, Martinez was awarded the Pathways Grant from CDE. This allowed the staff to look at that accountability pathways and begin to discuss each one and which made the most sense for the Martinez community. These conversations also included parents, district level representation, and as we already shared in October of 2016, 100% of the staff voted to pursue the innovation pathway. This began the works towards innovation. Then during the 16-17 school year, the staff and the broader school community began to create this plan. This innovation pathway gives greater flexibility and autonomy in use of time as it relates to teacher time, professional development and planning, for example. Parents, teachers, staff, and students are on board with the new mission and vision, aligned with this innovation plan, and there's new energy around STEAM and PBL as it relates to moving student achievement. As Dr. Pilch alluded to, the direction of pursuing innovation status was then affirmed by that state review panel. The state review panel said, because the school has been rated effective in the following areas, the leadership is adequate to implement change to improve results, the infrastructure is adequate to support school improvement, and there is readiness and apparent capacity of personnel to plan effectively and lead the implementation of appropriate action steps to improve student academic achievement. Therefore, the state review panel recommends innovation status for Martinez Elementary School. We have several plans to monitor our innovation plan. Some of those include leading indicators <coughs> that are being tracked on our performance management tool as part of the network. These leading indicators include attendance, chronic absenteeism, and behavior events as first indicators of school improvement. The state review panel reported that the school leadership beginning to act as a change agent to drive achievement gains and beginning to establish clear measurable goals and design to promote school performance. While this supports the movement of the school leadership, this direction and work is being monitored through weekly visits to the school by myself. I participated in the relay training during the summer of 2017 to hone my skills as a principal manager and will use these skills to continue to support Monica as the principal there. As part of the network, Martinez is using the PM tool to track and monitor these next steps as an administrative team. In addition, the BEI that was conducted with, with Monica will be used to set goals and support the leadership in this turnaround setting. The principal will meet with the assistant superintendent and the CDE turnaround support manager on a monthly basis to continue those supports.
The Buck Institute of Education conducted the initial training in project-based learning in the summer of 2017 and has been contacted about visiting the school to give feedback and support for implementation of PBL on site. The target date for, the, for this is spring of 2018. The Literacy Design Collaborative through Colorado Education Initiative allows teacher to, teachers to participate in common assignment study, which promotes them in comparing student work to students in other participating districts and schools, allowing the teachers to continue to raise the required rigor in student work to alignment with the state <coughs> standards. This ongoing work will assist in monitoring this lever, level of rigor. Parent surveys will be administered on an annual basis to monitor their perception and satisfaction of our school. Ongoing dibbles, phonics benchmark assessments, reading common assessments, writing assessments, and math assessments will be used aligned to the district and state standards to monitor students' acquisition of these standards. And Dr. Pilch alluded to our next step. After your approval tonight, the next steps for us are to present to the State Board of Education on Thursday, February, February 15th, 2018. Thank any you both questions? very much. Well, um, we may. You never <laughs> know about us. Dr. Pilch, anything else that you'd like to say before we hear from the board members? Okay. No. Did I say I recommend approval of this pathway? <laughs> <laughs> I think you got that yeah. across, yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, board members' comments, please. Ms. Pappas. Um, well, thank you, Dr. Pitch, <coughs> for um, not allowing the school, or the state, to <laughs> close down Billy Martinez. Um, just as I stated earlier about Salida del Sol, Billy Martinez is needed by the community as well. Um, the, <laughs> It just brings back so many memories of the just how important this school is to the community and the people that are sitting in the audience right now sorry the people that are sitting in the audience right now the teachers the staff Monica your your commitment your perseverance your dedication your um, willingness to do all that you have done to make it work is I just appreciate it so much. We all appreciate it so much. Well, I should speak for myself, but I think we all appreciate it. Um, but I, I mean, I just, it's hard to even put into words that you're sitting here with a PowerPoint and it's hard to put into words the work that has gone behind this. And so I appreciate everything that you've done, the support you gave, the oversight, the fact that it is an innovation school, the fact that, we, that there are people coming to visit Billy Martinez, knowing that it is a school to watch. I, I am just thrilled, I'm excited for the community, and I thank all of you for everything you do every day. Oh, and I will be uh, supporting this approval. Thank you, ma'am. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dr. Richard, please what she said, but anyhow, uh, the, the other piece there is thank you so much for thinking so holistically about the children that you serve because it, it's exciting to think about the preschool component, let alone the health center component for these children and these families. What, what an exciting vision you all have done. Um, and, and the fact that I see the number 100% of the faculty in that, that is a really odd thing to see on most anything. And so it's so very exciting to see just that cohesiveness and that clarity on the direction and where you're heading. And um, I'm, I'm just so heartened and so excited because you're right, when you look at those trends, what's happening for students in your classrooms every day, that is very exciting about what that means for their future. And you're, you're, at, you're at work and you're getting it done. So thank you so much for this. I'll support it. Ms. Elise. Just to reiterate what they both said <laughs> very well. I, I've seen across the state uh, what happens to a community when a school closes down, and it's devastating. And the fact that you were just this close from changing that status and it wasn't awarded is, is you know, I commend Dr. Pilchin really pushing uh, the way she has and the way, Monica, you have in your staff. You just have an amazing staff. It takes a real gift and a heart with passion for these kiddos um, to show up every day and do this hard work and to do it the way that you do it. 
And so thank you to all the <coughs> staff and all your hard work. And we are behind you 100%. We are rooting for everyone. And the fact that we're working together for these kids is, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. But thank you to Dr. Pilch and your staff for recognizing that this is a school that needs to be here and that closing or, or doing any other option was just not part of, uh, not even on the table. So thank you for your support and your continued support for this amazing school and this staff. I will be supporting it. Mr. Hafley. When you walk in a building, it's really easy to feel the ambiance and the culture and the climate of the leadership as well as the staff. And when I've wandered around the building, it's always heartening to see the passion that you all show for your students and their families. And because of that, we know, whoops, I know we that know. we will be <laughs> successful, you'll be successful in your undertakings in the future. And we'll be excited, we'll celebrate when you come back as a performance school in the next year. So thank you for what you do, and yes, I will be voting for you. Other comments? <coughs> I'll make as quick an observation as I can, because you guys have been waiting here all night long, <laughs> unless it's the cake you're waiting for. Um, <laughs> We uh, went to the state education, uh, the Board of Education, and they looked at us and they looked over at our superintendent and said, some of your schools are not doing well enough. And Dr. Pilt says, I agree. They said, well, that's not what we thought you'd say, but nonetheless, we are going to be watching you and, and this pressure is on and you better perform. And she said, okay, we will. And I think it's real clear that that's what we're up to. And uh, nobody works harder than people at Martinez, right? And so we have reached a way through great administrators and through cooperation in uh, the school itself to, to make this thing fly. As we're excited about it, we, you obviously have, have got some fans here at this side of the table. Uh, so unless there's another presenter, it might be time to do a roll call. Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Hazley? Aye. Mr. Lydia? Aye. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Ms. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Congratulations. Okay, take a deep breath and decide if you want to stay for cake or, <laughs> okay. or listen to stuff about the finances of the school district, which is a, a, a thrill for us, but it's an acquired taste. Nighty night, thank you all, congratulations. Well, the next item is the appropriation resolution, and um, it is an action item. And we'll be chatting quite a bit about some finances here this evening, but uh, it'll require a motion if you don't mind someone, please. I move that the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 approves the appropriation resolution as presented. Second. It has been moved and seconded. And, and I, I have a call for order. We also have um, a... a uh, um, an appropriation resolution. Should we be reading that now as well? Okay. If someone wouldn't mind reading that appropriation resolution, do we vote on both at the same time? Yes, that'd be fine. Just motion one. Just motion. Yeah. Correct. Just motion one. That's. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm leaning on Rhonda to read motion one. I think. And then. To read all this too, or just the top? Are we reading just the motion? Theoretically, the amounts and, and everything. The amounts. We've okay, so it's someone else. <laughs> Sorry, you want to no, this. we're going to find a volunteer. Just correct. Motion. Here we go. Oh. Be it resolved by the Board of Education of All County School District Six that the amounts shown in the following schedule be appropriated to each fund as specified in the revised budget for the fiscal year beginning July first, two thousand seventeen, and ending June thirtieth, two thousand eighteen. Fund general operating fund. $204,489,467. Dental Insurance Fund, $1,100,000. Pooter Learning Center Fund, $254,900. Risk Management Fund, $10,490,000. 
Colorado Preschool Program Fund, $2,309,208. Food Service Fund, $10,847,482. Grants Fund, $17,750,000. Platte Valley Youth Services Fund, $1,622,903. Bond Redemption Fund, $9,837,974. Capital Projects Fund, $8,046,653. Scholarship Fund, $20,000. Student Activities Fund, $1,750,000. Athletic Fund, $300,000. Total appropriation, $268,818,587. Thanks, everyone. Dr. Pilch. Thank you, President DeWitt. Um, and thank you, Mr. Hayfley, for, for reading all those numbers for us. I, I think you read them last year as well. It seems I, I familiar do. to me. So um, what you have before you is really our, our budget revisions that we are recommending for the 2017-18 budget. You will see and have seen in here that there are some significant shifts here as a result of the passage of our mill levy override. Yay. Uh, and those additional dollars coming into the system and, uh, and putting those dollars where we have promised our voters that we would do. Um, and then also, there's some significant shift in here because of the flooding at Meeker Elementary School. We have received some dollars from our insurance carrier, and yet we're still navigating that with our insurance to determine who's responsible for which pieces. Uh, we do feel it is prudent to shift dollars uh, for Meeker should we need to use general operating dollars uh, to cover expenses at Meeker Elementary School. And then the other pieces are pretty self-explanatory there as well. And I see that uh, Megan Sponsler, our chief financial officer, has made her way to the podium as she, she is the true expert behind all these numbers and, and this work. Welcome, Ms. Sponsor. Thank you very much. Dr. Richard, please. And just to confirm that, so this is the truing up after the student count, but none of these monies have come from reserves. In the general fund, we are requesting permission to spend $4 million of reserves um, for potential meager rebuilding. For the, okay. Yes. And, and if I may and, clarify on that. Yeah. Um, so uh, we, we don't know yet what the insurance will cover or not. What we do know is that there's some things while we are, well, we have Meeker closed, uh, we have an opportunity to go in and get more natural daylight into the building. We have the opportunity to move the, the front office and get a more secure front office entry so that you don't walk straight into the, directly into the building without going through the office. Um, and those are some things that very likely we will be paying for out of our dollars rather than out of insurance um, dollars. And we feel like we recommend that we shift these dollars to do that as, as we feel this is a, a prudent use of carryover dollars. And, and yet our uh, reserves are still in a position that puts us in a, a solid footing. Right. You may recall that last year we ended the year with a positive fund balance. And so really the way this worked out, it worked out nicely that the amount that we're requesting to spend is a, a little bit less than what we ended on a positive note last year. So it, re it really is more of a shift. Right. It's, it, it is. You can almost think of it as a carryover. Yeah. Right. That we're spending last year's money this year. Yes. Okay. And, uh, you know, I had said what, to one of our board members who came in to ask some more detailed questions about this that uh, really uh, what you see is that carryover as a result of, of us spending very, very conservatively over the last couple of years because we have, we've been so fearful of what would happen if we did not pass a mill levy override. Um, with the passage of the mill levy override, we feel confident in the, the use of these dollars and, we, and really capital improvements like this at Meeker Elementary, very appropriate use of carryover dollars as a one-time expense. It certainly seems we're in a fortunate position to have a, a crisis uh, in that school and to be in a position not to use Band-Aids to put it together in a, in a less than satisfactory fashion. So I appreciate hearing that. Other comments from board members? We have a motion and a second and a discussion completed. Roll call. Ms. Crane. Mr. DeWitt. Aye. Mr. Hapley. Aye. 
Mr. Lydia? Aye. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Ms. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. The next item is going to be very similar, y'all, to uh, how we got here. Uh, it's a resolution regarding the transfer of funds. It will require a motion, and then it will require a slightly less exciting resolution to be read. I'll uh, be glad to accept that motion now. I move the Board of Education of Weld County School District 6 authorize the transfer of the following funds, $5,950,000 from the General Operating Fund into the Risk Management Fund, $2,309,208 from the General Operating Fund into the Colorado Preschool Fund, $265,000 from the General Operating Fund into the, into the Platte Valley Youth Services Fund, $4,500,000 from the General Operating Fund into the Capital Reserve Capital Projects Fund. And do we also need the other resolution, the other? Uh, um, well, that, that, the, that's Is that it. sufficient? That's it. Dandy. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you very much. Um, Dr. Pilch, Ms. Sponsler, someone want to pick up on this uh, motion number two? Yes, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. It really is just the transfer of the dollars from, from the funds they were originally allocated in this past summer when you approve the budget to the funds where we would recommend we move them to for the actual spending that we plan to do. <laughs> it sounds very logical, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Board comments or questions? We've had the opportunity to look at this information. We've had the chance to get some questions answered. Um, I'll go ahead and uh, ask for a roll call, Ms. Curry. Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Haefeli? Aye. Mr. Lydia? Aye. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Mrs. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. <clears throat> the next item is the um, resolution regarding the authorization of use of beginning. Am I wrong? Fun, you're right. Um, beginning fund balances. Fund, fund balances. Motion number three. Does someone have a copy of this to read I this? Do. Thank right. you very much. I move that the Board of Education of Walter County School District 6 authorize the use of the following fund balances for the purposes indicated. General fund, $4,200,000 to contribute to the rebuilding of Meeker Elementary and appropriate, an appropriate uh, contingency reserve. A Pooter Learning Center fund, $12,900 to cover one-time expenses for property improvements. Food Service Fund, $500,000 to cover the cost of food and other supplies. Capital Projects Fund, $2 million to complete projects started in the previous fiscal year. The Board of Education of Walter County School District 6 authorizes the use of the beginning of the fund balances for these funds for these purposes because they are non-recurring expenditures and are funded from previously designated funds reserved for these expenditures. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Um, Dr. Pilch. It's very straightforward. Uh, again, just how we intend to spend those fund balance dollars or how that carryover of which Ms. Sponsor spoke about. We're happy right. to take questions if you have any. Okay, we may. Um, comments from board members? Questions associated with that? Kind of covered it while ago. We certainly had the opportunity to look through this material and we appreciate your time. <coughs> if uh, there aren't any comments, then I'll open this uh, door to a roll call, please, Ms. Green. Mr. DeWitt? Aye. Mr. Haefeli? Aye. Mr. Lidiak? Aye. Mr. Matthews? Aye. Ms. Pappas? Aye. Dr. Richard? Aye. Mrs. Solis? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. And that's our completion on uh, the budget aspects. Um, it was a lot of fun, except the room kind of cleared out. Uh, <laughs> guess more cake for us. How big is the cake? Uh, that's it. Um, thanks, everybody, for participating. We will see you in February. This concludes our agenda and the meeting this evening. We are adjourned. <laughs>